you Muslim? Are you Muslim? Huh? Afraid no. No worry, don't be afraid. <laughs> where, where are you from? Uh, Britain. Uh, which part of Britain are you from? London. Uh, London. No, no, no. So you, you believe, are you Christian? Christian, yeah. So you believe in God, alhamdulillah. So you believe Jesus to be God? Uh, yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. What's your name? Jasper. Nice to meet you, Jasper. My name is Shamsi. Can I ask you a question, Jasper? Yes. You and I, like all the Jewish people, we believe God is perfect. Okay? And uh, God is self-sufficient all the time. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. So therefore, logically speaking now, if Jesus is God, by default, he has to know everything all the time. Correct? Because God knows everything all the time. Jesus is God, therefore he knows everything all the time. Simple, logical and way. This particular offering up, which is God takes the form of infinitude and then allows himself to be sacrificed. And for me, that's what gives us like the grasp on but that's the contra creator. That's contradiction, though. That goes against God's nature. Because why? If you already, you already affirm and you accepted that God is self-sufficient and is perfect. So if God become a baby, baby is in need of food. It's not any more of a contradiction than the problem of evil. No, no, what I'm in saying... My opinion, no, in my opinion, the rupture which has to come from that, because it's a dual nature, it's true that it's a dual nature, uh, it's not any more of a disruption than the fact that there was a will that came away from God. No, what, what I'm saying, so are you telling me God become a baby does not contradict God's perfection? So is a baby need, in need of food? It, it takes a form of affinitude, but that's part of God's will. Because he had a divine nature. I'm going to ask, is a baby in need of food? Yes. Is God in need of food? No. Not so how? No, uh, so Jesus is not God? He is. So Jesus is God. If Jesus is God, so God is perfect. Yeah. And that is Jesus. So therefore, the same thing applies to Jesus. If he's God, regardless of Father or not, because by definition, God is perfect, is not in need of nothing. So if God become a baby, which is, baby, what is it? It's created, was born, human, and so on, is in need of food. God becoming something that is created and becoming in need of his creation that clearly contradicts God's perfection. I mean, I don't agree, because I think there was a, it retained the divine nature. So he was God and a man at the same time? Because it was uh, for the sacrifice. I understand. That. I, I know, you believe God, the, the son become a baby to die for our sins, Jesus and so on. I know that. But what I'm saying, you know, you are for, you know what you're doing? It's like telling you someone, uh, uh, what do they call it? Killed someone. Instead of focusing on the person, you're focusing on the knife that he used. What I'm saying that, Firstly, if God become a baby, firstly, God has no beginning or end. God is no human being. So God is no human being, but he can become human being, doesn't make any sense. That's what Allah said in the Quran, the example that Allah gave in the Quran, that about Mary and Jesus, both of them were in need of food. Why Allah mentioned that? Because that is not the nature of the Most High to be in need of food. That is the nature of the creation, not the creator. So you are saying the creator became a creation? I didn't say he was the creator. It's different, it's different natures within the unity. So Jesus is not God? Or is he God? Yes, he is. Uh, okay. If God doesn't have the attribute of the creator, can he be God? Uh, yeah, I think so. What? I think it's, not, it's, it's, not, um, it's not like a, it's not like an object which has predicates. So he has deficiency then, God? Jesus? Because uh, he doesn't have power to create? I don't think that's the same definition. Because I think it's a, a morally divine nature. That, that Jesus has a, has a power to create. Well, he did miracles. No, Jesus as God, does he have the power to create as God? Uh, no. So he's deficient, you worship God that is deficient? I'm not sure I follow. <laughs> he's not all powerful. He's not all powerful to create. No, he wasn't all powerful because he was a human being. No, no, before he became human, he was God. Yeah. When he was God, did he possess all the divine attributes which make God what God is? Yes. And that is one of them, the creator of everything. He, That's, but he gave them up. No, no, before he gave them up, my point, was he the creator of everything before he became a human? 
I just don't think we're going to agree. To be honest. May Allah guide us to Islam. What do you know about yeah, Islam? Whole, what do you know about yeah, Islam? It's a, I think. Um, I know, let, let, let me tell you why it's Islam. Islam is simple. There is a creator, one God, who is all powerful. He's not in need of nothing. Everything is in need of him. He created his creation based upon his wisdom and his justice and mercy. And he chose people amongst us to convey the message to the rest of the people that we are here to worship God and this life is a test. And the God that we believe in, he described himself to us in the Quran. Say Allah is one, unique. Allah Samad is a master, self-sufficient, is not in need of nothing, and everything is in need of him. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begat not, neither was he begotten. Wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. And there is nothing like unto God. That's the creator I believe in. What do you think? Uh, I think the is one. difference is that um, I don't think there's any way that that kind of God, a human being, can have a grasp of it. It seems like there's too much of a rupture between, like a difference between uh, Allah and the human being. It seems yeah, because like, Allah is the creator, we are the creation, yes. But I, th I think uh, what's unique about Christianity and what's true about it is that uh, it's the offering up, it's the spirit of sacrifice. So that's why Christianity, How about relationship? Christianity is a break from previous religions because it has this very developed ideas about sacrifice. So there's no more need for ritual sacrifice. No, see, our God is not a need to kill someone innocent for the sake of someone else. Our God, we have a relationship with him directly. You see, you, yeah, you, so, I, you see, Islam, sorry, Islamically, when it comes to relationship with God, the, the, the best and the perfect concept of relationship with God is within Islam. In Islam, I don't have to go to the Pope, I don't have to go to the Imam, or to the Mullah, or to scholars. Islam, if I have a problem, I worship Allah directly. I don't have to go through Prophet Muhammad, Jesus. Allah told us don't go through no one except to him directly. So we have direct connection with the Creator. Allah does not bring someone who is innocent and kill him, humiliate him, even though claiming that his son, you know, and yet to forgive criminals and the murderers and the rapists and pedophiles. That is not the Creator believe in. Our Creator, if you commit sin, you are responsible for your sin. Because if you commit sin and you're waiting for someone to die for it, that's called what justification for your evil. That's why we can, we can go into that in details. And that is the belief of the pagan Romans about believing their sacrifice. Because the Old Testament, show me one prophet from the Old Testament, believe that someone has to die for your sins for God to forgive your sins. One prophet from the Old Testament, show me one. Uh, well, it, it is brought up in prophecy somewhat. It no, no, I'm not about prophecy. Uh, a child born of a virgin. No, because it was a new thing. No, no, no. Like, I'm asking the, you one prophet. Through, I, there's no one. There's but no all one. All through the Old Testament, there's this development. So there's from the Ten Commandments. There's no, before that, before that, covet, that, before that, sorry, brother, neighbors. before that, I'm talking about the prophets. So there is no there's prophet. No okay. So therefore, all the prophets and messengers came teaching the people that you'll be responsible for your sin. Then Jesus came. According to you, says, no, I'm going to die for your sins. Then Prophet Muhammad came after. He said, no, you are responsible for your sins. Logic dictates the only, the, the, the only false prophet is Jesus, according to your belief, because he opposed all of them. Prophet Muhammad goes in line with all the prophets and the messengers in the Old Testament. But no, because there's a break with Jesus Christ. He changes the nature of religion because he changes the nature of human community. Yeah, but Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law, not to break the law. When a young boy came to Jesus, he said, oh, good master, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? So remember, this young boy is coming to who? To the one of the best people, the Messiah, Jesus. And he's asking him about the most important thing that we ask ourselves, you know, about how can I get salvation, yeah? So he's asking him, and that's the best time for Jesus, the, the true Messiah, to clarify the truth. He said, oh, oh, good master, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? He said, don't call me good. He said, why are you calling me good? No one good, only God alone. Then he said, keep the commandments of God. What is the commandment of God? The Torah. And what is in the Torah? You'll be responsible for your sins. The young boy said, I have been doing it since I was young. Jesus said, but you are lacking one thing. He said, what is it? He said, give you wealth away and follow me. He never said to him, you want salvation? Do you want eternal life? Believe I'm going to die for your sins. You're saved. He never said that. That's why I said to you, reflect, think about it. I mean, I can go deeper than that. I can tell you even, you have to go. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. What we do before we go home, pray to the God of Abraham, the God of Jesus, the God of Moses, 
to guide you to the truth. Would you do that? Yes. So Jesus has a God. He cannot be God then. All right, take care of yourself. May Allah guide him. Alhamdulillah. Khulas, I summarize. You know, subhanallah. When you look to Islam, this is one of the points that I've been mentioning recently. When you look at all the prophets and messengers, came, worship, salam alaikum, came, worship God alone, one God. Then according to Christian, Jesus came with Trinity. Then who after Jesus, Prophet Muhammad. So logically speaking, the only false prophet and teacher about God is Jesus, according to the Christians. Because he is good and guess all the prophets and messengers. But Prophet Muhammad is good in line with them. All the prophets and messengers of the Old Testament, all of them came, you're going to be responsible for your sins. According to the Christians, Jesus came, no, I'm going to die for your sins. Who came after that Prophet Muhammad والسلام, that you'll be responsible for your own sins. So Prophet Muhammad's teaching is going in line with all the prophets and the messengers. Who's opposing them again? Jesus. SubhanAllah, that's why the lines I can show them. Christianity is a paganism religion, no doubt about that. I mean, look, sometimes I, I go patient with some people, but as soon as you tell me God become a baby, you know, khalas, you lost it, man. I mean, like, come on. What is the lie? It doesn't make any sense. But I'm patient with them, try to... But as soon as you say, the Almighty become a creation, the Creator become a creation. I mean, like, come on, man. That's why Christianity is dying in the Western world. And the non-Muslims are looking for salvation. That's why upon us Muslims, learn Islam, and first to learn it, for us to implement it, according to our abilities, also to give da'wah. You know, you don't have to be on camera giving da'wah. You can give da'wah by giving the leaflet, by donating, by uh, uh, getting water to your brother, by, you know, some people they think the only way to give da'wah by be on a camera or in a mosque teaching. No, there are some people, they give da'wah behind the scene better than me 1,000 times. I know some brothers, they have the da'wah, no one knows them here. But who knows them? Allah. Subhanallah. If Allah knows you, you don't need to people know you. Wallahi, may Allah give us sincerity. And may Allah give us humbleness. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khair. You know what? I have to check. Check with Abdul Rahman, Akhi. Yeah. Uh,